Hey everyone, welcome to another NDEB updates, Dr. Hafez from Scholars Dental. In this video, I'm going to talk about some highlights from the NDECC webinar that happened in March a few weeks ago. And I made some notes from the video that, I, that the NDEB has posted and uh, I'm going to share those with you. Um, the next would be minute 16 <clears throat> and we're going to talk about the evaluation and grading. Um, let's see, recommended grading by dental regulatory authorities and faculties of dentistry. So they're doing the grading that's recommended by, you know, the, the dental universities and, um, RCSO and, and, and organizations like that. So the regulatory authorities examiners will be calibrated. So there's no subjectivity. So they're going to try to make it that the, all the people examining will be kind of, they have a standard of how to mark you. Okay. Each requirement will be graded by two examiners. So each requirement is graded by two examiners. So two people will grade your work. And then there's a third person for a tiebreaker. Okay. So if the two people that are grading your work don't agree on something, the third person will, you know, decide and then that way we'll, we'll take your score into the, to a direction. All right. So pretty much they're trying to minimize any subjectivity in your marking. I think that's a good thing. Um, then you have <clears throat> 16 and 30. I'm going to go to that time and talk about what they showed here. So grading the clinical skills and the judgment. So the skill is going to be graded on typodonts, obviously, and it's going to be four evaluation sessions per year, and you have to pass all requirements. So that is quite the new thing here. Now this, so let's, let's spend some time on this. Okay. First of all, the evaluation now, okay, this, the, the, let's say, let's call it results. That's what we call it. Results will be four times a year. Okay. That's a, a, a big point. I look at it. So even though we are doing the exam or you're doing, you have the opportunity to do the exam possibly every week, the results come out four times a year. So is it better? Yes. Is it, you know, absolutely amazing like that you did the one, the exam this week, you get the result at the end of the month. No, it's not, it's not in, in the best of the, the best. And it's not, it's still better than what it was before you only get the results, even though the exam was done twice a week, a year, you would get the results twice a year, right? Now it's four times a year. So the, the timeline does change now. You can't really get the results. Uh, you know, you, you don't know when you're moving to the next step right away. It's not just based, I mean, how do you want to think of this? So every three months, there's going to be results released, right? So that means the maximum time you have to wait for result is going to be three months. <clears throat> so the maximum time, let's say you did the exam, um, you know, just after one result came out, then you would have to wait three months for the, for your results, right? <clears throat> but if you did the exam closer to the result date, maybe you'll get, the, you know, you'll, you'll wait less than a month for your results. Does that make sense? You might think, oh, what? Wait three months for my results. That's insane. But really, if you think about it, I'm talking about from your exam date, <clears throat> you know, um, it's still, it still it depends on when you did the exam because in the ACS style, right? You have to wait for the exam six months, right? Let's say you missed this one. You have to wait six months to do it. And then after the exam, you might get your results in eight weeks. So you're really, you know, you're, you're just to do the exam, you're waiting six months plus eight weeks for the results. In this case, in the new NDECC, right? Um, you don't have to wait for the exam six months, right? So you could, you could do the exam next week, then wait three months for your results maximum. So, which means if you take this whole time, you know, from here to here, technically you're, you're to get the, your ACS results, you are waiting more than six months. You're waiting around seven because 
you need six months to wait for the exam to come and then and you might be practicing that time and then you wait for your results after now you could do the exam you don't have to wait for the exam and you could say okay it's going to be three months to get my results so it's still better okay so let's not look at it um you know negatively it's it's still better but i can understand from a resource point of view that they can't just have it ongoing um they explain that in the video that they they can't just have these examiners come in every day or they have to it, it's a lot it's a lot of work to get them organized and to calibrate them and uh, so that's understandable. They're doing, I think, their best with it. Now, with the S, uh, situational judgment, they're, you're going to be recorded, right, on video. They're going to evaluate that. And it's also for, uh, for evaluation sessions per year. So I think four results per year. And you have to pass six out of the ten. So you don't have to pass them all. And, and this is a big point now. What, what makes you pass the exam? So... In NDECC or, or in the a, a skills, must pass all. In SJ, uh, you have to pass, must pass 6 out of 10. Which means, in another way, remember how we said there is going to be uh, each category. Let's put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each one has two stations right so you have to pass and they said this you have to pass one at least out of each plus um one where you pass both okay so you cannot fail two in one category okay if you do that they'll consider that i think a fail that's what i understood from the the uh this webinar okay so this is an area that was important let's move forward and see so again cannot fail two requirements in the same um in the same area remember we said each area has two stations you have to pass one of the two and one station you have to pass two of the two grading time is a resource intensive so they're saying why they can't do it more than that and they need three examiners and calibrate to grade your work each requirement needs three so they need 21 people minimum for evaluating the the hypodonts so they could do that four times a year will be released in similar time frame as acs so i'm assuming you know ace well i can't assume there too much so we'll wait until they give us dates now how grades are reported um let's go to the 1840 i have here Okay, so it's either it's going to say you passed or failed, and, and if you're competent, minimally competent, and that's it. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, and then they show us the test center. So 930, let's go there. And you're going to get lockers, so you can put your stuff in. Um, you're going to get a disposable gown. They'll give you a disposable gown. Um, they say you could wear professional street clothes or a scrub suit. I probably for wearing scrubs um, and there's going to be 10 examinees on any test day doing skills same time there'll be 10 doing the sj the situational judgment so total of 20 students on site on a test day 10 doing skills and 10 doing sj as we said in the beginning the top of this whiteboard they showed also the, the simulators you'll be working on 21 12 i'm going to go to that time So these are a ADAC simulators. Okay. It's going to look like that. Now, this is a photo that's not actually there, but they're saying it's going to be the same head that they've always used from Kilgore. The same one. They just haven't placed it on the actual simulators yet. That's why it has its own. But they're going to use the Kilgore ones, but they're going to use the ADAC uh, simulators, which are these. So mannequins used on Kilgore, same as before. The photo is not accurate. That's why they have a photo here. Um, Tybodonts are Kilgore, same as before. That didn't change. There's going to be a mobile cabinet for supplies and three working surfaces. You're going to have three spots to put stuff on, right? So let's take this back. Okay, and see what else we got here. Um, 2020, the unit. 2220. 20, let's see, 2220. This is how the unit area will look like. 
okay and just showing you how it is and let's go to 23 okay they're showing you they'll supply the materials this was important actually um come empty-handed except for your loop so only bring loops let's actually make a note of this i think that's a that one is worth to note oops only bring loops okay <clears throat> now what else do they say here this is quote from what exactly i'm quoting what they said there is no need for you to purchase exactly what we have on the list so you don't have to go out there and to get the exact curing light, the exact, uh, you know, explorer, the exact, you know, they're trying to s teach people, or I think they're trying to be like, you're a dentist, whatever we give you most of the time, you'll be able to work with that. Right? So there's no need for you to push That's what they're saying. Now I know that most students don't like that. They want to use exactly what they are. So they're more comfortable, but I think you know, if you go, if you're, if you know how to do the work and you go from office to office, you're going to find different things in different offices. You don't stop working just because it's different. Right. But I know, I understand that it may affect some people's work. Um, but this is what they're saying. I'm just reporting. Most of you would have, uh, most instruments as they are standard. So most of you already have these instruments based on the ACS, no need to change. So the carver you have is fine. You don't have to use the same that we have on the list. Again, I'm quoting. Uh, now I'm paraphrasing. We have been asked that what curing light is provided. We're pleased to answer, but you could practice with any curing light. And they're right. I agree with this kind of mindset. Like you don't need the exact curing light. The curing light is a curing light. Okay. Just use, just cure the composite. <laughs> okay. Um, another point you may, here's one last quote. They said, you may want to practice with the material we will provide and prepare teeth with the burrs that we provide for example, that's important quote that they at the end finished with in this slide. And they said, the only things you want to replicate, you know, a hundred percent is the burrs are the birds. So buy the exact same birds they're using practice with those and the material, the composite amalgam material and temporary crown material, exactly the ones they're using as well and practice with those, but the instruments, you don't have to be the exact. Other things are just, you know, almost the same. Okay. Um, again, when you go to a course, if you take a course, we're offering NDECC courses as well uh, online. Now we're testing that out. But if you are taking a course, um, you will be, your instructor will guide you through this as well. So I'm not telling you here how you should prepare. I'm just reporting what are the highlights of the webinar. Now at 2430, I'm going to go there and they just showed us their lab here that you could use it to make your temporary crown. I mean, I think it's better. To, they, they said you could also stay chair side. So I'd rather stay chair side. So that was pretty much the summary so far. Now I'm not going to summarize yet because they had a Q and a at the end and we're going to go through those. So the first question they had was about infection control. Important question. Um, this was time 2505. So I'm going to go there about infection control. Oh, there's nothing really in the image. The NDEB was asked many questions about it and too much time to answer it all today. Okay. We will make sure to answer all these questions on the website. So what they're saying basically is that there's a lot of questions that people ask, but they're going to provide answers on the website through, you know, updating their guide and, 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 and their practice practical guide. The goal is to create an environment that is more authentic and simulates the dental office. Good. That makes your life easier as a student, no longer asked to use barriers because dentists do not use barriers the way they were used in the ACS. I love that. That's great. You will work as if all the requirements are performed on the same patient. So you no longer need to reset between each pay requirement. So pretend that there's one patient, you don't have to reset between each requirement. So let's make notes. No more barriers. Because you know, in the dental office, you just wipe everything after, um, no barriers. 
um, and all requirements on one patient. Okay, so that was the first question. You will work as if, okay, we said that. Uh, the next one, we will, will we have practice teeth? So some students were asking, will we have practice teeth um, during the exam? The NDEB answered, we will continue to have practice teeth for you, and I'm quoting here, but no longer in the assessment typodon. So the practice teeth, I think before, they probably said you could cut on the other teeth in the same typodon they give you. That's part of your exam. What they say here now, you will be provided with one arch to practice and you will be able to practice on any tooth in that arch. So that's where I kind of got confused because does that mean they're going to give you... So here's your assessment typodont. You have your typodont and assessment and then the one that's the exam. And in addition to that, are they going to give you a separate arch just like on the side to practice on? That's what I think they mean. But are you going to put this in the, you're not going to like un actually unscrew the typodont from the head and put this in. I don't think you would do that. I think it's just the practice is not for you to practice the positioning because you already do that. You're, it's for you to practice the, how strong, you know, your motor is, your handpiece is, and how, how it's going to affect how you're going to cut on the teeth. Maybe that's what they mean because they're saying your practice teeth won't be on the assessment typodont, which is usually already screwed in. And I don't think I'm comfortable taking that out and putting this in. To, to, I'm just probably, if I would practice, I'll just cut through these uh, without putting it in the head, you know, just keeping it on the table, just so I get how soft it feels and how powerful my, my burr is on that day, just so that I know, you know, how much, uh, how much I need, uh, you know, force I need to apply. Um, the next question is at 2630. So I'm just going to go there. This is important. Yes, we got to a good one. Uh, 